What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Culture Wave Media Network. We are here to talk to you guys today about non-spoiler review of Transformers 1. I am going to be Darian Scalamoni, one of your hosts for this review, as well as Mark Iacobino. What's up, Darian? And I'm joining the animation crew for this one. Uh, and this was one that I was I was pretty excited about when I first saw the trailer, but then or when I first heard about it, the voice cast, I actually reported about it on the blog, like I think it was like a year and a half ago. And uh, Brian Tyree Henry's an actor I really like. Getting to see Crim Hemsworth as, as Optimus was interesting. I didn't know how that was going to go. Um, but Transformers is, is like a cash cow for Paramount. But at the same time, the quality of the live action films hasn't always been great. Um, so this was interesting that they were going to try to do an animated prequel. And to be honest with you, I came out pretty surprised with how much I liked this movie. I don't know if you felt the exact same way, but what did you think? I thought this movie was very okay. I thought the the animation style was awesome. I really appreciated them trying something new in animation. Uh, I thought the voice cast was actually great. Chris Hemsworth shocked me with how good of an Optimus Prime he was. Um, I thought Megatron was great as well. Uh, and I think where it lacked for me was, I think the humor was not good. I, I don't think any joke landed for me throughout the entire movie. Um, it tried to be a kid's movie, but I think it also wanted to be more mature in tone. And I think it kind of towed that line, not as good as it, as it probably tried to. Uh, and I think that's where it lost me a bit. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think it, it was solid, but, um, I didn't like it as much as a lot of other people. I think that there's there, it's fair to say that the, there was like, it was hard with the two tones they were going to go with. And we actually talked before we started recording this, that like the marketing for this movie was really interesting because they kind of, and the sad reality is that sometimes a lot of the times people look at animation as a kid's medium, which it's right. not. Yep. Um, it's a genre in and of itself. And I think the problem is that with the humor that's in this movie, a lot of it being from Keegan, Michael key who voices Bumblebee. Mm -hmm. um, I think some of it worked for me probably more than you did. For you and I had my audience actually kind of digged some of the humor, which was interesting. Um, but the thing that I clung on to the most was the world building. Mm. And for me, I'm not somebody that grew up watching Transformers. Like I said, I had seen two of the live action films, but I was never really into the story behind what made the Transformers the Transformers. And this movie, in terms of the way that they were trying to break down the world, made a lot more sense to me, and I appreciated it. And yours, I actually wanted to ask you this because, like, with Clone Wars, oh. I feel like they try to do something where they were always towing that line, where it's like, because it started, did it start on Cartoon Network? Yeah, it was all on Cartoon Network until it was canceled and then moved to Netflix, and then it finally came back with Disney, Disney Plus. Plus. Yeah. So, like, I feel like sometimes they try to tow that line too, right? Because it's it initially was, I mean, Cartoon Network is more of a child skewing yeah it was work. usually based on the arc like if the arc was a more serious tone all of the episodes kind of followed that but if there was a more kid focused tone then the arc would follow that and wouldn't deviate from that so it was okay. consistent in that sense overall like you said it's it was a mix of of both tones yeah but they they do a really interesting thing and in in this movie i guess going into the plot a little bit without spoiling too much um optimus and megatron start as best friends and it shows you how they grew up as miners together and there's a shift that happens eventually. And if you know Transformers, you know what's coming. Mm -hmm. But it, it takes a turn in an interesting way. Um, they also have other um, big voice casting with Steve Buscemi, uh, as well as uh, John Hamm. So mm -hmm. they have good voice acting, like you said. And I, I would I would sort of agree with that. Um, but the story, it, it does try to toe that line, like you said, of is it trying to be too serious for itself? I mean, there's there are some moments that could be seen as too dark for a, a seven-year-old to see. Yeah, I mean, you definitely see it in, well, in it, the movie. Well, they get away with it because it's robots doing it. Like, it, you know, there's exactly. decapitations, but it's a robot, so it's not as intense as if they did it with, like, human characters. Um, so they were able to get away with some of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But overall, I had a fun time. Like, I was entertained the whole entire time, which was the big thing for me. Uh, I think the humor worked a little bit more for me than it did for you. But um, Keegan-Michael Key as Bumblebee, it's interesting with that character, too, what they've done. With Bumblebee over the years, like Bumblebee so different, spin yeah, so entirely different than what they did in the animated movie. Um, but in terms of a score, uh, I I enjoyed this movie. It was it was not like the greatest movie ever, but I really had a lot of fun with it. And for the Transformers movies that I have seen, it's by far the best. I think mm. it's 
the most well made. The Shia, better than the Shia LaBeouf and Megan Fox. Yeah, the first I, one? yeah. I didn't. I I thought the first. I thought the crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the first live action Transformers was like, it was like fine. And the second one, I to be fair, I saw the second movie actually before I saw the first one. Oh come on! Second one sucks <laughs> really bad. <laughs> I can't um, say I remember anything past the first but, one. Yeah, but um, no, I had a lot of fun with this. And uh, when you do have the moment where, because you see in the trailers, Hemsworth isn't using the Optimus voice, mm-hmm. but when he gets that moment, it it really works. He yeah. actually really embodies the character in a way that I really appreciated. So I'm gonna go higher than I think you probably thought I was gonna go with this. I really had fun with it. I'm gonna go with an eight. An eight wow. for Transformers One. Wow. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna go with a, a six and a half. I think the humor brings it down a lot. I wish a lot of the humor had landed. I appreciate the cinematic nature of it. I like the animation style. I think the voice acting is great. Um, I think they lean a little bit too much into those exposition dumps where I appreciate the lore. I do because there's no humans in this so we could focus on the Transformers. Um, But I think in some scenes it's like, okay, just exposition dump to all the characters right now and it's very convenient. Um, I think the story is a bit predictable. I think from the first 10 minutes I kind of knew exactly all the story beats that were going to happen and they... They happen exactly how I expected, but I do think this does set up an interesting world that they can explore more in future films, if there are any. Um, So yeah, I would say it's 6.5. I I maybe had higher expectations for it, but um, I don't think it's a bad time, but I I think it could have been better. Okay. Well, guys, let us know in the comments what you guys thought of Transformers 1. This is our non-spoiler review. We have a longer spoiler conversation that's going to be on the channel for you guys later after you guys watch this. But let us know in the comments what you guys thought of Transformers 1. And also, do you guys have expectations for maybe what might come in the future with these movies? Uh, there is two post credit scenes. Um, so it, it's leading into the I only, future. I only saw only one. Saw of them. one. <laughs> I stayed for the end of the, the other credits one. Which is actually, I ran out of the things. <laughs> which is actually builds off of into a potential... <laughs> sequel but again uh be sure to like this video if you guys can and comment your thoughts and subscribe to us we have the culture media network we do a bunch of things in all film tv and culture related so please be sure to subscribe and um just signing off i'm darren scalamoni i'm mark alcabino and we'll see you guys next time this is the culture